Well hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd give you an update on the Fiesta RS style spoiler project and what I've done following those epic fails last time round. So I decided to mock up uh, a 3D printed version of the vertical strakes for the spoiler. The idea is that I'm able to then um, fit those onto the parts to check the fitment um, and then use these as the buck for taking uh, female moulds for making glass fibre. Uh, so obviously it's the usual process so I would have cadded the parts up uh, and I've tried to add some extra features on this time to really improve um, the connection between the structural parts on the wing. So here you can see um, it's a part that requires uh, build supports um, as there are overhangs uh, due to the sort of aerofoil cross section of the part but actually uh, it's a relatively straightforward build. Um, you can see some additional fastener mounting holes there. Uh, I'm planning to use uh, a woodworking fasteners uh, to provide kind of threaded inserts. So you can use an M8 or an M6 bolt uh, and then to have cut throughs with rubber grommets plugging them so you're able to reach the opposite side um, and bolt the spoiler onto the strake. So the first task um, is to break away the part from the print bed. It's relatively straightforward because I've got a magnetic spring steel system and then to pull off the kind of raft of build supports around the outside. Now what's proving to be more tricky with these 3D printed parts is then the uh, the overhang supports which you see are a little bit more solid uh, around the back of the part. So using a craft knife uh, I'm finding myself stroking along the part as if you're whittling a piece of wood um, and then finishing it up with a bit of sandpaper in a moment to, to get the final finish that you're looking for. Uh, but on this occasion, I'm really just taking off any rough pieces um, so that I'm ready to do an assembly. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a lot more sort of detail work needed to trim the part. It probably takes about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so to get it looking representative um, after the print process is finished. But the nice thing about this is you've got good accuracy, I'd probably say within a mil. So it's really good for doing an assembly and then getting a, a feel for how lots of different parts will come together. That's the joy of being an engineer, thinking about problems um, a couple of steps down the road. So after a, a quick tidy up, uh, getting everything ready um, now to have a look and think about what we're going to do next. So why build one when you can build two for twice the price? So I've now got two representative vertical strakes to mock up and fit to the lower spoiler. So you can see they slot in quite nicely around the rear brake light cutout on that spoiler. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice the leading edge of that lower spoiler is covered with foam. Uh, but I've mentioned in a previous episode, I was looking to add a bit of extra cord and width uh, just to help with the fitment over the back of the car. Um, so clearly I, I need to work on that to trim it uh, to make it into a nice straight edge. But looking at the new holes um, on the front part of the strake, um, we've got an interface for a threaded insert. So the idea is that would screw in um, flush um, if I was putting it all the way through the part. And then you could drill up through the lower spoiler um, to fit that. I then have this sort of larger diameter 16 mil hole, which will eventually be hollow all the way through to allow you to pass a bolt uh, on the end of a hex driver um, to screw it up through this hole um, into the upper spoiler. Um, so basically those are my connecting parts. Um, I've also fixed up that upper spoiler. You remember in the previous video I had a chemical reaction. It's been rubbed down, sanded, primed and top coated. So you get a feeling there for how that, that part would sit together um, on, on the assembly. So onto trimming uh, that lower spoiler. So relatively straightforward, cracking out the Victorinox knife uh, and eyeballing it relative to uh, the original build line. Um, and then using the Sander 3000 to, to make a nice radius leading edge. Coating everything in body filler. So this is what makes it rigid um, and then putting it on the back of the car and weighing it down so that you don't put uh, any build stress into it and you get a nice part that follows the shape of the back of the car while it's curing. So I've just got some sacrificial bits of foam here and there just to, to hold everything together so I wasn't damaging the part while it was curing. Um, the next step is to then sand that all flush. I'm not going to bore you taking through the sanding process again, but then giving it a coat of black pigmented resin, which you can see here. Um, I've then mocked the vertical strakes on with masking tape and then attached them onto the car. Um, you can see it's pretty kind of uh, industrial looking stuff here. Lots and lots of tape, lots and lots of hopes and wishes and dreams. But actually, I think it's not a bad start. So you can see how the lower parts are, are interfacing. Um, onto that spoiler and from the front of the car gives you a feeling for, for roughly how high that will sit uh, relative to the roofline at the back of the car. 
So here's the upper spoiler in position now on those vertical strakes to, to give a feel for how it would look over the back of the car. Um, so it's about a 15 centimeter cord on that upper spoiler. A little bit of a, an upward flick at the back uh, to act a little bit like a gurney flap, I suppose, improving the downforce and flow attachment at the back of the car. And here's an example of one of the end plates that I've been working on. Obviously that's not a final part by any stretch, but it's just to give uh, a feeling for how this will look. But what I'm wanting to do is to have a part that can be dismantled um, so that a kit of parts can either be posted out to people that might want one um, or they can be taken apart for painting, disassembly, reassembly, as you like. Um, I know that the issue with the original RS spoilers knocking around is they're all one piece uh, and they tend to crack at the interfaces and they're not particularly durable. But hopefully with this design, um, the owner would be able to take it apart and uh, modify and make it look as nice as they need it to. So I'm now able to focus my attentions on the design of the end plates. Um, I had a few ideas, but actually I'm really pleased with how everything's coming together. So thank you very much for watching all, and for now, engineer out.